Alright guys, how would you like to learn about alkenes and alkynes? Alkenes are made only of carbon, hydrogen, and mostly single bonds, but they also need to have a double bond in it. Having a double bond is what makes it an alkene. Alkynes are the same, carbon and hydrogen, all single bonded together, but you have triple bonds among them. Now, the way that these differ from alkanes, all single bonds, is that we have to use the ending ene -E for alkenes and yne -E for alkynes. I'll show you how that works soon. And what really makes these different from alkanes is that if the double or triple bond could be in more than one place in the molecule, then you're going to have to tell us where it is. You're going to have to give us an index or a number to show us where that double bond is. Here's an example. We're going to name these together. First one here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons long. So that means we need hex for 6. Now, the double bond starts at carbon 1, 2. If we labeled it from the other direction, it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 2 is the lower number, so we prefer 2. Now, this double bond could have been between the first two carbons, it could have been between the third and the fourth carbon, but no, it's here. We have to tell people that the double bond starts at carbon 2, and so we call this hex2-ene. That's H-E-X-2-E-N-E. -E. Now, some teachers who are using an outdated naming system might call it 2-hexene, but the IUPAC, the group of Swedish people who control how we name things, we don't use that anymore. We put the 2 in front of the ene to show that's where the double bond is. Let's try this again. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six carbons in a chain. So again, it's a hex. And the double bond starts at carbon number one. So this is hex one ene. Pretty straightforward, eh? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, I think I labeled this in the wrong direction. We could have labeled it one, two, three, four, five, six, and the triple bond would have started at carbon two. Again, we prefer the lower numbers. So, six carbons, hex, and we have a triple bond starting at carbon number two, hex two i. Pretty cool. Let's do this last one. It's a little branched. Uh, what color do I want to use? What's the longest carbon chain here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Looks like it's just 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That makes this a pentene. The double bond, or ene, starts at carbon 2, so it's pent2ene. And that takes care of these carbons in the chain, in the five carbon chain. Now we also, you might notice, have single carbon chains hanging off of carbons two and three in the chain. That's why we need to add a two comma three dimethyl. There's no space in between methyl and pentene. So we have a five carbon chain with a double bond starting at carbon number two. Check. And also, off of carbons number two and three, we have single carbon chains, or CH3 groups. 2,3-dimethylpent2-ene. Pretty cool. Good job naming that with me, guys. Now, for you advanced folks, you may see a molecule that has a double bond and a triple bond. What we do is we include both suffixes. Here's what I mean. We've got carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is definitely an oct. But we have a double bond starting at carbon, uh-oh, 1, 2, 3, 
two, three. See how I always have to n figure out which one has the lowest number? I'm going to give the een the lowest number here. Oct two een and six ein. Now, there's this thing where if you have anything after the een, you're supposed to cut off the extra e. Just trust me on that for now. And we have oct two een six ein. This shows us we have an eight carbon chain with a double bond and a triple bond. The double bond starts at carbon two, the triple bond starts at carbon six. Now, for those of you who are even more advanced than that, you may be asked to tell people whether the molecule is cis or trans. I'm going to make a separate video for that. For now, I need you to draw this. Let me show you how I draw organic molecules. Hept means seven carbons in a chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Starting at carbon one, I have a double bond. Carbon one, double bond. And I have two methyl groups, that's single carbon chains, hanging off of carbon three and three. We called this carbon one, two, and three before. So I'm gonna put a CH3 here and a CH3 there. Three, three, dimethyl, hept, one, ene. It's a beautiful thing. The last thing I wanna point out are some of the properties of alkenes and alkynes. It's still only carbon and hydrogen, so it's generally nonpolar, which means it'll dissolve in nonpolar solvents like hexane, but not in polar solvents like water. And the last thing is the intermolecular forces. Now, they're basically pretty much the same. Alkene, alkane, alkane, alkene, alkyne. Like, take a look at the boiling points of hexane. One hexene and one hexine. They're all pretty comparable, but this is a trend for all of them. The alkenes have slightly lower boiling points than the alkanes. The alkynes have slightly higher boiling points than the alkanes. Uh, let me reword that. The highest boiling point among the three goes to the alkyne, and the lowest one goes to the alkene. The alkane is somewhere in between. Now, I don't exactly know why this is the case. I think it has to do with the fact that the way this bond is, it doesn't allow the molecules to be packed as closely together as this or this, just because of the arrangement of the atoms around the double bond versus the triple bond or single bond. But don't quote me on that being the reason. Long story short, this has the weakest intermolecular forces, the alkene, and the alkyne has the strongest intermolecular forces. Cool. That's it. Alkenes, alkynes, name them, draw them, have fun with them. You know, it's a party all day, every day. Best of luck.